The iPhone 15 and 15 Pro have had USB-C for about three months. Now, this release was much better than the iPad's transition to USB-C, which just felt like a locked down and not a lot of accessories worked. Now, over these last three months, I probably have not pushed the limit on this phone, but having USB-C on this phone helps me as this is my main camera for my social media. So let's take a look at how I use USB-C on my iPhone 15 Pro. First, let's start with the mechanical keyboard. This can require a little more power than the standard keyboard. So here I have the HyperX Alloy, which has a removable USB cable. So if we plug in the iPhone 15 USB-C cable from the keyboard to the dock, we can see that it is fully functional and even allows for the RGB to work. I only would do this if I do not have my folding keyboard, but for demonstration purposes, this can be done. When writing longer video scripts, having a fully mechanical keyboard can be a better typing experience than a thin folding keyboard. Next is microphones. Since moving over to the iPhone 15, I have been recording my audio using my Elgato Wave 1 microphone. It allows me to plug in with any USB-C to USB-C cable. And in my testing, it has worked best when recording my voice in a sort of treated recording space. Now, the Wave software does not work, so therefore we cannot take advantage of the VSTs that are available in Elgato's marketplace. But this is by far better than using the phone's internal microphone. Now, in my full recording setup, I use a USB dongle which has USB-A, USB-C, and an HDMI port. This allows me to plug in an HDMI and connect this to a capture card, and now we have video output from the iPhone 15. In the USB-C port, we can plug in power, which will allow us to charge the phone. And finally, in the USB-A port, that is where I plug in my Elgato Wave 1 microphone. And this setup is very similar to how a full camera setup would be used, but can still be taken apart and fit into the size of my pocket. This was one of the main reasons why I upgraded to the iPhone 15 Pro. Another great feature, and something I do plan on doing in the future, is recording directly to an SSD. I recently picked up the small rig smartphone cage and side handle to be able to get those crispy, steady B-roll shots. And this inspired me to find the perfect smartphone cage build, I guess you could say. And if I find it before I post this video, I will link it in the cards above, but the creator built a fully smartphone camera cage with all the bells and whistles, and this just shows the possibilities of this phone. So be sure to get subscribed to see when I finalize my build. But the iPhone 15 Pro now supports ProRes recording at 4K 60 frames per second, but only to an external hard drive. So if I take my Samsung drive here and plug it into the iPhone, you will now see USB-C shows up at the bottom of the preview window. As well, I can now select 4K 60 and it will give you a estimate of how much time is available at the top of the screen. And if I remove that drive, it will change to 4K 30 and the USB-C will disappear at the bottom of the preview and the time that is given now represents the space on your actual phone, not the external hard drive. And with the complexity of all of that, when it comes down to it, USB-C just allows me to charge all of my devices with a single cable. I can plug in my iPad to charge, take that same cable and plug it into my iPhone, take that same cable and plug it into my laptop, my mouse, my keyboard, my wireless headphones. I can charge everything in my bag with a single cable. And if you are away from the power plug, you can plug devices into your iPhone using that same cable and your iPhone will charge those devices. So if you need to boost your headphones if they died on your commute, or your wireless mouse or wireless keyboard died, plug them into your iPhone and your iPhone will juice them up just like having a battery bank. If I take a USB-C to lightning cable and plug the USB-C into the iPhone 15 and the lightning cable into my iPhone 13, as you can see, this will charge my iPhone 13, but it will not charge the iPhone 15 as it does not support lightning to USB-C, only USB-C to lightning. 
And you can do the same with a USB-C device with the iPhone 15. As long as the device has power delivery enabled on that port, the two phones will negotiate and the higher charged battery will begin to charge the lesser charged battery. This also works on AirPods, even with the lightning adapter. Now, if you use your phone to download or upload files to certain cloud storage drives or social networks, you may not have great service where you work. For myself, I am in the basement of my house. So if I were to use cell signal, I only really get one bar down here. So what we can do to solve this is take a USB-C to ethernet plug, plug in ethernet, which now gives us a direct connection to my gigabit home internet. So transferring to and from the cloud would be even faster, depending on your home network connection, of course. But we can also turn off all wireless connections to test the full speed of the ethernet. And there we have it, a full speed direct connection to your iPhone 15, just like if you were working off a laptop or a computer. Now, unfortunately, not everything works. If I take this capture card and plug it into the iPhone, it will not pick up a video signal. I believe this is due to the total power output that is available from the iPhone. Same goes with external cameras. If I plug in an external webcam into my iPad, my FaceTime preview will change to that camera. But if I do the same thing on my iPhone, nothing happens. Hopefully we can see that change in a future iOS update as well. With an SSD plugged directly into your iPhone, there is no way to make a complete backup of your phone. To some users, their phone is their home computer, and they may not be able to pay for iCloud storage. And given this option would allow the users to make a complete backup of their phone if it was ever lost, stolen, or stopped working. But there it is. These are the ways that I am using USB-C on my iPhone and two features that I really hope Apple does include in future updates. Thanks for watching. Hit that like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new and have a great rest of your day.